There's a storm out on the ocean, and it's moving this way. If your soul's not thanking in Jesus, you will surely drift away. Oh, there's a storm out on the ocean, and it's moving this way. If your soul's not Anchor in Jesus, you will surely drift away. Oh, drift away, Lord. Yeah, drift away, Lord. You will surely drift away. Yeah. If your soul now, anchor in Jesus, you will surely drift away. Oh, there's a storm out. On the ocean, and it's moving this way. If, if your soul's not anchored in Jesus, you will surely drift away. Oh, drift away, Lord. Drift away, Lord. You will surely drift away. If, if your soul's not. Anchor in Jesus, you will surely drift away. Psalm 91. He who dwells in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I will say, the Lord, he is my refuge and my fortress. My God in him will I trust. Surely he shall deliver thee from the snare of the fowler and from the perilous pestilence. He shall cover you with his feathers, and under his wings you shall take refuge. His truth shall be your shield and buckler. You shall not be afraid of the terror by night, nor the arrow that flies by day, nor the pestilence that walks in darkness, nor the destruction that lays waste at noonday. A thousand may fall at your side, and ten thousand at your right hand, but it shall not come near you. Only with your eyes shall thou behold and see the reward of the wicked. Because you have made the Lord who is my refuge, even the most high your dwelling place, no evil shall befall thee, nor shall any plague come near your dwelling. For he shall give his angels charge over thee to keep thee in all thy ways. They shall bear thee up in their hands, lest you dash your foot against the stone. You shall tread upon the lion and the adder, the young lion and the dragon you shall trample underfoot. Because he has set his love upon me, therefore I'll deliver him. I will set him on high, because he has known my name. He shall call upon me, and I will answer him. I will be with him in trouble. I will deliver him and honor him. With long life I will satisfy him and show him my salvation. Now did God cover this service with the precious blood of Jesus. Give us your Holy Spirit that we may lift up the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 Uh, we'd like to, for you to turn your hymnals to page number 41. Old familiar hymn, but I like what it's saying. As I journey through the land, singing as I go, I'm pointing souls to Calvary, to the crimson flow. Many arrows pierce my soul from without within, but my Lord leads me on. Through him I must win, singing, oh, I want to see him, look upon his face, there to sing forever of his saving grace, on the streets of glory, let me lift my voice, cares all past, all at last. When in service for my Lord, dark may be the night, but I'll cling more close to him, he will give me light. Shake and snares may vex my soul, turn my thoughts aside, but my Lord goes ahead, leads whatever be tied. Oh, my voice. 
Accessory prayer by Sister Melissa Yarbrough, and then we'll have two selections and the sermonic hymn, and then the very next voice you will hear will be that of our good friend and brother, Reverend Blount. Let's receive him at this time by saying amen. 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 Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Father God, we do appreciate your grace over us throughout the week. Father God, we just thank you for you anointing us for today. We thank you for this time. We thank you for this hour, Lord God, that you want us to rise up and give you the glory in every situation. Father God, before we say anything, before we ask anything, we come before you to ask for your forgiveness of anything that we said or done that was not pleasing to you. We thank you, Father, for everything that you provided for us. We give you the glory, we give you the honor, for this is the day that the Lord has made, and we will rejoice and be glad in it. We praise your name, Lord God, for you are mighty. You're the great conqueror. We thank you for the blood of Jesus that covers us throughout the week, throughout the day, Lord God. We thank you for every home that's represented here today in the name of Jesus. You know every situation, Lord God. You know what's on their hearts cried, Lord God. You know what's on their hearts. And you said in your word that you will perfect those things that concern us. We thank you, Father, for you giving us wisdom and the spirit of discernment, Lord God. We thank you for us loving each other, Lord God. We thank you, Father, for giving us for, for saying things that weren't pleasing to yours at all, Lord God. Have mercy upon us, Lord God. Have mercy upon our homes. Have mercy upon our families, Lord God, during this time, during this Thanksgiving time, Lord God. We just thank you for you ministering to those that have lost loved ones, Lord God. For those that have are, are sick in the hospitals, Lord God. I thank you, Father, for you being there in the midst of every situation. We thank you for their protect, the protecting angels that guard and provide, Lord God. You are our Heavenly Father. And we're crying out. You know our needs. We're desperate for your word. We're desperate for your face. We're de desperate not for your hand, not what you've given to us. If you don't give us anything else, you blessed us with our lives, Lord God. You blessed us with our homes. You blessed us with income and resources, Lord God. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. We thank you, Lord God. You are worthy of the praise. You are worthy of the glory, Lord God. And we thank you. We give you thanks, Lord God. You are worthy. You are most kind, God, to us. When we have been unloving, Lord God, you've been there for us. 
Thank you, Father, for you healing the, the hearse, Lord God, mending, Lord God. Thank you, Lord God, for your being there in, in spite of ourselves. You are there for us. And we thank you, Lord God, for your grace and your mercy over your people, Lord God, over those that are not lo are unsaved, Lord God. We just thank you for them coming to your heart, coming into the kingdom, Lord God. And we bless your name. You alone are good. You alone are faithful, Lord God. Thank you, Father, for my husband, Lord God. Give them strength, Lord God. Give them your grace, Lord God, to feed your people in the name of Jesus. Lord God, we thank you for you covering him, covering the people that you that you um, that you cause him to, to be the under shepherd, Lord God. Thank you, Father God, that you're giving us words that you want us to hear, Lord God. Thank you, Father, for the blood of Jesus that no weapon formed against him shall prosper. Thank you, Father, for every person that he, he deals with, Lord God. God. Lord God, let us be that the extension of new Rehoboth, Lord God. Thank you, Lord God, that we will be there, that we will listen to people, Lord God, that he won't have to do every single thing, Lord God. Thank you, Lord God, that you're giving him grace, Lord God. Thank you for your mercy, Lord God. Thank you for Reverend Blount and Sister Kim, Lord God. Thank you for their ministry, Lord God. Thank you for their family, Lord God. Thank you for your grace over them, that no weapon formed against them shall prosper. Thank you for your hope. Thank you for your grace, Lord God. You alone do marvelous things, Lord God, in our presence that we will not forget what you've done for us, Lord God. Thank you, Father, that we will have a praise on our lips for the grace that you've given to us, Lord God. You alone are worthy. You alone are good. You will do exceedingly, abundantly, far beyond all that we can ask, think, or could imagine. Thank you, Father God, for the blood of Jesus that covers us. We thank you for the blood of Jesus that covers our home. And we're traveling, Lord God. We thank you for your grace. You alone are worthy. Thank you, Father, for your continuing your hand of providing. You are El Shaddai. You're the many-breasted one. We thank you for you healing the ones that are addicted to several addictions, Lord God. Lord God, we just thank you, Lord God, that they come to you in the name of Jesus. Lord God, we thank you for the children. We thank you for their homes, Lord God, that they represent. As they go to school, Lord God, we thank you for the blood, the blood of Jesus that covers them. And we give you the thanks and the praise and the glory. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Glad I got Jesus down in my heart. Glad I got Jesus down in my heart. Glad I got Jesus down in my heart. Anybody? Glad I got Jesus in my heart. Glad I got friends down in my heart. I got I got. Jesus. I got Jesus. Everybody got Jesus. I got Jesus. I said, if you got 
got Jesus. I got Jesus. You got a mighty good lawyer. I got Jesus. If they got Jesus. I got Jesus. You got a mighty good friend. I got Jesus. You got a mighty good friend. I got Jesus. You got a mighty good friend. I got Jesus. Go ahead, I got Jesus. Down in my heart. Sometimes we get caught up with the new stuff, but sometimes we gotta go back and get that old stuff. Song don't say a lot, but it says something. I'm pressing on, I'm pressing on, I'm trying to reach my heavenly home. I got a few more tears that I have to shed. A few more burdens I have to bear. I'm pressing on, I'm pressing on. I'm pressing on. Lord, I'm trying to reach my heavenly home. Got a mother there, mother there, father there. I'm just trying to make it in. I'm trying to make it in. I'm pressing on, Lord, I'm trying to reach my heavenly home. I got a few more tears that I have to share. Some more burdens, I have to bear. I'm pressing on, I'm pressing on, I'm pressing on.
is real to me. Singing, oh yes, he gives me the victory. Why are there so many people doubting him? Well, I can't live without him. That is why. And that is why I love him so, yeah. He's so real to me. Singing real. I know that Jesus is real to me. Singing, oh, oh yes, he gives me the victory. Why are there so many people doubting him? Well, I can't live without him, and that is why. So real to me. Jesus is real to me. Amen. I don't know about Amen. you, but he's going to show himself to me. Yes. So I have no doubt in my mind that he's real. You know, I'm, 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 I'm going to just step off and just do something because, you know, God has been good, right? Yeah. God has been good, right? Yeah. Has God been good Amen. to you? Amen. Amen. Well, damn, right here. Why, why don't y'all just stand up and just give God praise? Yeah. Come on, no, no, no. We got to give God praise. Yeah. The Word of God says that like everything, yeah. everything yeah. that has breath, yeah. praise the Lord. Now, I don't know what God has done for you, but I know what he has done for me. But God did some things in my life that I never thought that he would do. He opened up some doors that I never thought that he could open. He removed some enemies out of my way. And see, that's all you can praise God and give him glory for, because God is good. So we just give God praise and we give him glory and we give him honor. For he is great. And he is awesome in every way. Come on, come on, let's just give him praise. Come on, let's just give him praise. My God, my God, my God. Thank God for everything that he's done. You may be seated in his presence. I just want to just take a little time just to give God praise and glory. Why? Because he's worthy. He is so worthy of our praise and glory. Amen. Amen. Do you want to give honor to our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, who is the head of my life and who continues to keep me? Amen. Even when I don't want to be kept, he continues to keep me and to guide me and to provide. And that's enough right there. Do you want to give honor to the shepherd of this house, Reverend um, Yarlboro? Amen. Amen. Let's give him a hand to his lovely wife who is here and Lady Yarborough. I want to give a Amen. shout out to her. Amen. Everybody and all the leaders of this great church here. I do you want to take the time out to acknowledge my beautiful and wonderful and sexy wife? <laughs> yeah, yeah. My wife here, Kimberly. Amen. Raise your hand, baby. Everyone can see you. She's always been with me, always stood by me, and always encouraged me in the Lord. Amen. I tell you, in these days, you need somebody like that to encourage you in the Lord. Thank you, baby, for being with me on today. Do you want to recognize my daughter? Our daughter is here also. Yeah. She's coming up from North Carolina Central. Gave me a call, was like, I'm coming up. I just want to get away. 
<laughs> and I said, okay, then come on up. So she's been up, and we thank God for her presence yeah. on the day and all that God is doing in her life. Yeah. She's a junior there. She's about to graduate. She's a 4.0 student, a scholar student. You all are going to hear about her soon because she's doing some great work in the media world. So you will be hearing some things. She has touched on some things with Walmart. She has done some other great things that she is doing. And um, we want to thank God for what uh, uh, he is doing in her life and how he's going to continue uh, to bless her tremendously. Amen. Amen. My mom sent her love. I uh, just want to let you all know that I am not Evangelist or Dr. Blunt. <laughs> just want to let you all know that, but I am her son. And she gave me a call and asked me could I uh, stand in for her, and I said sure. Amen. I was standing for her. Um, she wanted to be here today, but there's some things happening and she needs to kind of take care of herself. Amen. And so I just wanted to kind of give that message to you all, but she does send her love Amen. to all of you all. So now I'm here. Amen. <laughs> and I'm always happy to be here Amen. to uh, deliver the word of God. I don't want to be with before you long, but I do have a word from the Lord. Amen. I believe that God always give a word um, to help somebody uh, move and navigate through life. If you have your Bibles, I want you to join me in the uh, Gospel according to Mark. Gospel according to Mark. Chapter 1, chapter 1. We're going to begin at verse 40, and then we're going to end at 45. The Gospel according to Mark, chapter 1, verse 40. Ending at 45. Amen. May stand as we reverence the word of God. Amen. Now a leper came to him, imploring him, kneeling down to him, and saying to him, If you are willing, you can make me clean. Then Jesus moved with compassion, stretched out his hand, and touched him. And he said to him, I'm willing, be cleansed. Yeah. As soon as he had spoken, immediately the leprosy left him, and he was cleansed. And he strictly warned him and sent him away at once and said to him, See that you say nothing to anyone, but go your way, show yourself to the priest, and offer for your cleansing those things which Moses commanded as a testimony to them. However, he went out and began to proclaim it freely. I'm going to pause right there. I'm going to pause right there. This morning, God has given me a word that is not crafted around a subject, nor is it designed around a topic. But the word this morning is in a form of a charge. Okay. Mm. And that charge this morning is this. Tell somebody about Jesus. All right. All right. Father God, we come in your precious and holy name to first say thank you, God. Thank you for your word. Thank you for your presence, God. Thank you, O oh God, because you're God and you're God all by yourself. And even then now, God, I pray, oh God, that you will hide me behind the cross and that you will speak a word. We lift you up and we praise you. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Tell somebody about Jesus. Amen. My brothers and sisters, I believe that we are living in a world 
where the message of Christ has become secondary rather than primary. It is amazing to me that folk know more about what's going on on social media, but yet many are illiterate when it comes to the Word of God. We know what's going on in the personal lives of others, but we rarely reach out just to say, how you doing? We know how to gossip and bring people down, rather than trying to understand their story. Are y'all with me today? We can tell folk how to take advantage of the American dream. We can tell people what's on sale at Macy's. But we have not done a good job reminding others that the earth is still the Lord's and the fullness thereof the world and they that dwell within. In other words, everything belongs to God. Amen. Turn to somebody and just tell them, everything belongs to God. Amen. Your money belongs to God. Right. Your car belongs right. to God. Right. Your body right. belongs to That's God. Right. Your house yeah. belongs to God. Yeah. That's why there's no need to yeah. boast about yeah. what you have or what you did because it's really what God has done to you to make things happen. Yeah, it's, it's God that has done all of that. That's why Sometimes what God has done for you needs to be put in the atmosphere. Yeah. It needs to be put in the atmosphere so that others can hear what God did in your life to make you stronger in the Lord. You need to put it in the atmosphere so that others can hear how God took a bad situation and then he turned it around. Have yes, yes, God yes. turned some things around yes, in yes, your life? Yes, yes. Is there anybody in here that can say that God has turned some stuff around in your life? Yes. You thought that you were going to lose some things, but guess what? God provided. Yes. Yeah, and when you know that he is Jehovah Jireh, you don't mind telling somebody, just hold on. Yes. God will provide. Yes. You don't mind telling somebody that trouble don't last always. Yes. You don't mind telling somebody that God will make a way. Don't you know that tomorrow that God has the power to flip the script yes. of what happened? in your life. That's why we ought to come up in the church and give right. God praise. Yes. Yes. Yeah, yeah. He, he knows how to, to flip the script. That's why we don't have to wait until the battle is over. But we can praise them like it's already happened. You don't see it. But you are walking by faith uh, and not by sight. Uh, because when you begin to walk by faith, you are trusting his yeah. guidance. Yeah. And not letting your sight interfere. Because what your sight can do is throw you off course. All right. <laughs> and then you'll start wondering, is God still there for you? But I'm here to let you know that he is still in control. Tell somebody about Jesus. Uh, you may not have it all together. You may have slipped in your walk with Christ, but he's still working on you. Uh, he's still working on your thoughts and emotions. Uh, but if you can't say anything else, uh, you can tell somebody that by his grace, I'm still here. Uh, they may not understand what you have gone through, uh, but you can still tell them that by his grace, uh, I'm still here. The devil tried to take me out, uh, but I'm still here. The devil tried to bring me down, uh, but I'm still 
still here. I am still here giving God the praise that he deserves. Country for body. And just tell him I'm still here. I've been through some trials, but I'm still here. I've been depressed, but I'm still here. I've been neglected, but I'm still here. I've been disqualified, but I'm still here. I felt like giving up, but I'm still here. I'm still here. And if I'm still here, that means that God got a plan for me. If you're still here, that means that God has a plan for you. He has plans to prosper you and not to harm you. Plans to give you hope and a future. Amen. You are still here. And guess what? You don't have to have a title in front of your name to tell others about Jesus. Amen. All you have to do is open up your mouth and just tell folk, he lives. All right. <laughs> he, he, he lives. He ain't dead, but he's still living here. He's still working miracles. He's still healing. He's still doing the things that he said he was going to do. Amen. He lives. This man, this man was not a leader of the Jewish sect in this text. He was not a wealthy man, but he was a man who received a miracle mm. from Jesus Amen. that he could not keep to himself. Amen. Have you ever been bound by something or someone Amen. and God brought you out and you had to tell somebody? Amen. I don't know if you, whether you've been there, but I've been there before yes. where I couldn't keep it to myself. Yeah. Jeremiah reminds us that it's like fire yeah. shut up in our bones. Yeah. That means that when you touch fire, you got to move. <laughs> and so every time you think about what God has done for you, you got to tell somebody yeah. what God has yeah. done for you. Yeah. Yeah. I remember, I remember when I was younger, there was something called testimony service. Uh, yeah. Some of y'all may know about that, uh, where someone would get up and tell the church uh, what the Lord has done for them. Uh, yeah. Somebody on the right will stand up and say, I thank the Lord for being here. I thank the Lord for my life, health, and strength. Uh, somebody on the left will stand up and say, uh, I thank God that I'm alive uh, because I was on my that bit, but God came and healed me. And then the mother on the front row will stand up and start singing a song because he lives. I can face tomorrow. Then she said, because he lives, all fear is gone. And she said, because I know who holds the future, life it's worth living. Why? Because he lives. And I want somebody to know this morning that the God that we serve is a still a living God. There's nothing about him that he cannot do. Our God still lives. Come on, put your hands together if you believe God. This man, this man was excited. And he spread the news about Jesus. Because see, he was once bound, but now he's free. And whether you know it or not, who the sun sets free is free indeed. I don't care what they come, he is still able. Because the word tells us, now unto him, that can do exceedingly, abundantly, all that we can ask, uh, according to the power that worketh within us. Uh, God is still able. Uh, yes. And I want somebody to know, I don't care what you're dealing with. Uh, I don't care what you're going with. Uh, I don't care what it may look like. Uh, our God is still able. Yes, is. Don't forget uh, that God is still able. <laughs> and you know what? Somebody needs to hear that, yes. that God is able. Yes. Yes. This 
man, this man was bound with a skin disease that we call leprosy. Mm -hmm. And if you know anything about leprosy back in that day, this man condition was viewed as a mark of sin um, or a divine punishment. Uh, now it's strange to me uh, that people know how to label folk, uh, but at the same time, God knows how to deliver folk. Uh, <laughs> deliver you out your pain. Deliver you out your chaos. He can deliver you. People infected with this leprosy often was banned from worship. Uh, they couldn't be part of the usher board. They couldn't be part of the choir. They couldn't be on the Dickens ministry. They couldn't be part of MIT, but they was isolated. They were separated from their communities. Folk didn't want to talk to them. But when Jesus stepped on the scene, yeah. I'm here to let somebody know that things change. Yeah. And if you ever have an encounter with yes, God, yes, things will change. Yes. <laughs> Hallelujah. Yes. Come and talk to us. Yes. He said, I changed my ways after meeting Jesus yes. by showing and giving people half of my belongings to the poor. And I paid back four times to anyone that I've cheated. He said that when God came into his life, he made a change in his life. Yes. Come on and talk to us, Paul. Paul said that when I was on the Damascus Road, uh, I met this man called Jesus. Uh, something got a hold of me, uh, and a change took place. Uh, I, went, uh, I went from persecuting the church uh, to becoming a Christ proclaimer. And now you know that he has written half of the New Testament. So that's what God can do when you have an encounter with him. And I don't know what your encounter looked like with him mm -hmm. that caused you to change. But I want you to understand that it's not strange that you don't act the way you used to act. Mm -hmm. It's not strange that you don't talk the way that you used to talk. Mm -hmm. It's not strange that you don't hang out at the places that you used to hang out at. It's because the change has taken place in you. Yes. And when there is a change taking place, you're going to have a different mind. You're going to have a different mindset. You're going to have a different behavior. Things aren't going to click the way that they used to do. You may have to let some folk go because God has a plan just for you. Amen. That encounter that that man had changed his life Amen. to the point he just had to tell somebody. Amen. He had to tell somebody what the Lord has done for him. Amen. And as I began to dig deeper into the text, yeah. one of the things about this man that I noticed is that he had no fear. Yeah. No fear in spreading the news about Jesus. Amen. One of the reasons why there is a disconnect from telling others about Jesus is because fear. Right. Yeah. The fear of losing friends. The fear of not fitting in. The fear of not being invited to that next function. The fear of losing that certain status. But if there's anything that the enemy wants to do to keep you paralyzed, it wants you to stop sharing the word of God about Jesus. Yeah. This man decided, rather than being bound by fear, that he was going to exalt the name of Jesus. Yeah. Because he realized that if it had not been for the Lord, mm, 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 I wish I had two or three people that could just... Yeah. Oh my God. That's enough for right there. That just, that just done something for me. If it had not been for the Lord, just think about your stuff right now. I'm going to let y'all think about it right now. Because, see, right now, I feel like running right now. Because I know mm, 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 if it had not yes, been for the Lord yes, on my side, where would I be? The enemy wanted to keep me out there, but God said, no, you're coming with me. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. 
If it had not been for the Lord on your side, yes. you could have been stuck on drugs. Yes. If it had not been for the Lord on your side, you could have been in something that you couldn't get out of. If you had not been for the Lord on your side, yes. where, where, where would you be? Yeah. I'm not talking about if it had not been for that job. I'm not talking about if it had not been for your money. Mm -hmm. Because see, those things won't keep you when you're hurting. Right, right. But I know a man yeah. who, uh, who promised to be your present help in the time of trouble. Yeah. So when you in trouble, yeah. you can always call on him. Yeah. I don't care what time it is. Yeah. I don't care how, if, how you're feeling on the inside. You can call on him at any time, and his line is never busy. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. Call on him in the time of trouble. If you're going to be effective in telling the story or witnessing about Jesus, I want to suggest two things. The first thing is that you can't be connected to him only when your resources dry up. All right. <laughs> oh, yeah. Woo! You know, it's funny that people know how to find God <laughs> when they have nobody else to turn to. That's right, that's right. They, 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 they know how to find him when they don't have no one to turn to, when there is no light at the end of the tunnel. But your connection to him needs to be relational. Yes. Amen. Amen. Oh. Not only does it mean praying and reading your Bible, but it also means being a committed follower of right. Jesus. Right. Come on, Jesus, talk to me. He said, all right, all right. That's why I said that if any man or woman come after me, they have to deny themselves. That's right. That's right. Pick up their cross and follow it. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. If you're going to follow him, that means that you're going to be committed to his ways. Amen. That means that you're going to obey what he says. Yeah. Because obedience is better than sacrifice. Yeah. Jesus says something profound in the Gospel of John 10.27. This, this is relational here. Because if you're going to tell somebody, you've got to have a relationship. That's right. That's right. He says in John 10.27, he says, my sheep. They know my voice. Oh my yeah. That's right. Not only that, he said, but I know theirs. Yeah. 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 So, so, so when you're crying out in the midnight hour, yeah. he already know who you are. Yeah. Billions of people, but he knows your voice. Yeah. Yeah. And he said, not only that, he said, but they follow me. Yeah. Mm -hmm. and, and the reason they can follow him is because they are connected to him. Yeah. See, when you are connected to the root, you don't have a problem following him, yeah. and you don't have a problem obeying him. Yeah. Right. That, that, that's where we fall short. Yeah. The obedience is where we fall short, because our flesh wants yeah. to get in the way. Yeah. But God said, if you're going to be with me, yeah. I need you to obey me. Yeah, yeah. 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 Follow me, he says. And I don't know about you, but I don't follow nobody that I don't really know. Because I don't know where you're going to lead me. Right. Hey. But I know a man named Jesus who has a good track record. That's right. The second thing is this. You cannot share the mysteries of God. And I just hit on this a little bit. Preach. Until you know the word. Yes. David said that his words are lamp unto my feet, a light unto my path. All right. All right. So when I begin to speak those things, it becomes a light. Yeah. Yeah. That's why Jesus says everyone who does evil hates the light. Mm -hmm. That's why they get mad at you. Mm -hmm. That's why they don't want to talk to you. Mm -hmm. Because they hate the light. Yeah. Ah. And will not come into the light for fear that their deeds will be exposed. Amen. Can, can I tell you that they aren't mad at you? 
they are upset with the light. That's what it is. Yeah. Which is truth. Yeah. That, that's what they're upset. It's not, it has nothing to do with you. It's the light. Preach. And see what happens that rather than try to understand what the word is saying, they want to challenge you on everything. Right. How can you convey the good news of Jesus when there is no interaction with the word? In these last and evil days, we don't need a handout. We need the word. Yes. Yes. It's the word that's going to set you free. The last command or the great commission that Jesus gave before ascending to heaven in Matthew 28, 18 through 20. He said, all authority in heaven and earth is given to me. He said, therefore, go. He didn't say be lazy. No. He didn't say just sit there and rest. But he said, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything that I've commanded you. That's what we have to do. If they don't want to hear it, do what the Word says. Just take the dust from your feet right. and keep it moving Amen. as a testimony against them. Amen. Because very soon, they're going to need it. Yeah. They're going to need the word. They're going to need to hear the word. They're going to need something to hold on to. Because God is still in control. Yes, yes. See, you don't know, but as you are speaking what God has given you in your belly, and you're proclaiming the word, and you're, you're celebrating Jesus, and, and you're telling folk about God, it's doing something on the inside that you may not even see. And one of the things that it does is that it calls a personal transformation. Yeah. In other words, that person begins to grow, uh -huh. begins to understand the things that are happening. That's why the word tells us, be not transformed by the renewing our mind, but be truly <coughs> transformed. That God will be able to do some things in our lives. That's right. And that he will be able to help us along the way. The other thing is that it has an impact on others. The word has an impact on others. That's why we have to be careful of how we live. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Because most of the time, it's not what you say, it's how you live. Yes, and the question is, how are you living? How are you living? Does other people want to follow your ways. Mm -hmm. The thing is, is that it also conveys forgiveness of sins. Forgiveness of sins through Christ's sacrificial death on the cross. It helps us to understand that God loves us so much that he gave his only begotten son to us that we may live and that he may continue to work through us. Amen. And as we go through this life, seeking the Lord, if we got a little taste of the Lord, we can tell somebody about Jesus and all the great things that he has done. Amen. Because our God deserves that type of praise and he deserves that type of glory. I don't know about you, but I have to open up my mouth and tell people yes. that our God is still good. Yes. Yes. I have to open up my mouth and tell people yes, that our God is still able. Yes. I have to open up my mouth and tell people that our God will still open up doors. Yes. I don't care who's coming into office next year, right. but I want you all to know that our God is still in control. Yes. He's so much in control that he controls the economic system of the world. Yes. He's so in control that he controls the mind of the president to come. That's, right. That's the type of God that we serve. 
I want you all to understand that you can't sleep on God because God has not sleeped on you. But God is still in control. He is still opening up doors that you have not even seen. All we have to do is just trust in the Lord and let him do the rest. I know it may get hard sometimes, but let me tell you this morning that our God is still able. He's able to turn things around. He's able to just open up the windows of heaven and pull you out of blessing that you can't receive. He's able to do everything. You just have to trust in the Lord until you die. That's what God wants you to do. He wants you to depend on him because he's the only one that is able to get you through. I don't care what you're going through in your house. I don't care what you're going through in your job. I want you to know that God is still in control. You may not seem like it. You may feel like doing in the white towel, but understand that God is still with you and he will not fail you because he is faithful even when we are faithless. Do I have a witness in here? Do I have a witness in here that our God is still faithful? God want us to tell somebody, somebody, somebody about Jesus. Because he is our keeper. He is the one that will take care of us. He is the one that will be our provider. Even when we can't provide for ourselves. May God bless you and have a smile on you. And I just want to ask you at this time, did you know the Lord Jesus Christ personally as your Lord and Savior? Well, if not, this would be the perfect time to do so because you're not promised tomorrow. You're not promised the rest of this day. You need to make a decision right here and right now upon hearing the glorious gospel. You need to make it up in your mind that you're going to allow the Lord Jesus Christ to be Lord and Savior of your life. You don't know when you're going to die. Jesus Christ is alive. He's going to come back. By then, it's going to be too late. But right now, you still have time. The time that's been granted to you by God's grace and mercy to make up in your mind who's going to be your Savior. Well, there's only one. His name is Jesus. And he died for you because he loves you. But you're going to need your sins to be forgiven. And the only way for that to happen is for you to change your mind and accept the Lord Jesus Christ in your heart. Completely. Not partially. Not one of many different things. But realizing that he's the only way to complete salvation. Receive him into your life right now. Change your mind about yourself, about God, about the devil, this world. And accept Jesus Christ into your heart at this very moment. Or maybe you know the Lord Jesus the Savior, and you've gotten away, you've drifted, you've gone miles away in your own direction. Come on back again to fellowship with the Lord. Do the first work again. He's ready with open arms to receive you. Yes, you may have done a lot of things. You say, I've made a mess. Well, the Lord Jesus Christ died for your mess. He knew what you were going to do before you even did it. He knew things were going to fall apart before they even did but you know what he can do? He can put all the broken pieces back together again. You just come on back to fellowship with him. If either one of those is you and you're watching from wherever, make it up right now, today, in your heart that you're coming back to Jesus or you're coming to Jesus. If you're here, I want to talk to you after service to find out what's on your mind. Set up a time when I can see what the Holy Spirit is doing in your life and serve your needs. Amen? Amen. 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 Put your hands together once again. Great man of God. Yeah. We come today to remind us to tell somebody about the Lord Jesus Christ. People will tell people about ball players, and a lot of even believers have talked more about Donald Trump than they have about Jesus. You need to tell somebody what the Lord Jesus Christ has done. And I've even seen this. People are talking about what the devil is doing. But what is God doing? What has Jesus already done? And what is he doing? I can tell you what he's doing. He's on his way back. You look around and you can see everything pointing to the fact that Jesus Christ is soon to return. 
you need to get your house in order. Yes. You need to be a light that shines in yes. somebody's life, yes. wherever the case may be, in your home, in your neighborhood, yes. your job, your school. Let somebody know about the Lord Jesus yes. Christ. Show him Jesus in your life. Show the fruit of the Holy Spirit and uh, show that Jesus Christ is real and he's living and that he's soon to return. Don't let your witness be weak. Let it be strong in the Lord. Amen. Well, I don't know what to say. Tell what you know. Tell what's been great and good to you. And you can tell if somebody has done something for you, if somebody has given you something, you want to show it, don't you? If you go somewhere and you get a brand new car and you ride around with it, it's very clear what has happened in your life. And if somebody wants to know about it, what are you going to do? Tell them. Tell them about what the Lord Jesus Christ has done in your life that you know you couldn't do for yourself and that nobody else could do for you. That it was only Jesus that did it. You know why? Because it was a miracle and it was supernatural. And you give God the glory. Do not be ashamed to tell somebody else what Jesus Christ has done for you. Amen? Amen. It's not an option. It's a responsibility. Right. You and I to fulfill the great commission to do what needs to be done because you want to hear well done thy good and faithful servant. Amen. So you have to give an account for your witness. Jesus made it very clear. If you be ashamed of me here, I'll be ashamed of you before my Father in heaven. I want Jesus to say he knows me. Amen. And so right now I'm going to say I know him. Amen? Amen. 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 Let's praise God one more time for the great word that we heard today. Amen? Amen. Okay, so at this time, um, Going to stand and give the benediction, then the deacon's going to take charge off camera, going to have some announcements and be ready to go from there. So let's stand. And now may the God of all comfort and grace establish your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus, both now and forevermore, until we meet again. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 You may be seated. <clears throat>